About six years ago, Lexus introduced a stunningly gorgeous new flagship coupe to the lineup called the LC. Now, the LC was intended to replace the SC and, of course, the wildly expensive and exotic LFA in Lexus's lineup. And with the introduction of this vehicle, it instantly gave dealers a halo car to put in their showrooms whenever customers were visiting the Lexus store to have their current Lexus vehicle serviced. Now, of course, fast forward six years and the luxury coupe segment continues to shrink. However, the LC remains in the lineup as the top dog if you want something with style, sophistication, and luxury from the Lexus family. And as you can see this week, the company has loaned me the hybridized version. This is the 2023 Lexus LC 500H. It trades the 5 liter V8, which sounds incredible, with a 3.5 liter V6 and a pair of electric motors. And even though this model has less horsepower than the V8, it should offer similar amounts of acceleration, but with up to 29 MPG combined, this is the most fuel efficient entry in the flagship luxury Grand Touring Coupe segment. So as you can see this week, we're driving this Atomic Silver model with the circuit red leather. And if you guys are in the market for a luxury flagship coupe like this, but you require something that gets a little bit better gas mileage while still being able to turn heads out on the road, how does this 2023 Lexus LC 500H stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before I start talking about the exterior styling of this car, which trust me, we'll talk about that more on later in the video, I wanna remind you guys what's powering this vehicle. Now, I mentioned earlier, the V6 hybrid model has less horsepower than the V8, about 117 less horsepower, but I would argue that it also doesn't make this car any less desirable. Now, among hybrids or vehicles in this segment, this vehicle has a very unique powertrain. In fact, only this car and the LS500H shares this platform or this powertrain. It is basically dubbed a multi-stage hybrid from Lexus, although they look as if they're trying to kind of take away all the hybrid badges all over this car, which I'll talk about later on, because it pairs a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 that runs on the Atkinson cycle, I believe. The V6 on its own makes 295 horsepower and 257 pound-feet of torque. Add, of course, two electric motors to the powertrain, which only powers the rear wheels. This car is only rear wheel drive. The electric motor on its own adds around 177 horsepower and around 221 pound-feet of torque. Combined, Lexus says this vehicle offers 354 horsepower and they don't offer a combined torque figure. Now, of course, the V8 offers 471 horsepower, but as you guys will see later on in the video, this is actually not really any slower versus that five liter V8, which is very interesting to see. Uh, it does have a 1.1 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack that lives between the trunk area and the rear seat. It's a very small battery, so this is not a plug-in hybrid. It does, however, give you the ability to drive on electric only power at very low speeds, and there's no electric only range because this is not a plug-in hybrid. But what's interesting about this car is the transmission setup. It has a planetary style CVT, which is programmed to never feel like a CVT. It's programmed to always mimic shifts. And at the higher gears, it'll actually use a four-speed automatic uh, to take over to combine to give you the feel of a 10-speed automatic transmission. It's a very interesting uh, powertrain setup and gear setup. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get this vehicle out on the road. Now, fuel economy is rated at 26 in the city and 33 on the highway, which is about a 10 MPG improvement over the V8. If you look at the combined rating of 29 MPG, that's excellent fuel efficiency for something like this. Uh, like I said earlier, this vehicle is rear wheel drive only. My tester with a dynamic handling package adds a limited slip torsen rear differential, which would help put this power to the pavement. Now, in terms of performance, Lexus claims, I believe, a zero to 60 of time of a little over five seconds. Well, we've never zero to 60, 60 tested this vehicle, so we'll try it out when we get this vehicle out on the road. It has a top speed of around 155 miles an hour, and as it sits, it weighs in at just over 4,500 pounds, about 100 pounds heavier versus the V8-powered coupe. But let's go ahead and close up this very long and massive hood, and let's talk about the styling of this car. Now, when Lexus first introduced the LC back in 2017, the design of this car was wild. It looks like a rolling concept car, and it still turns a lot of heads today, even when you have it painted in this rather uh, tame shade of atomic silver, although the silver with the circuit red leather is an excellent color combination. You can really see how low and wide this car is. It's built on the global architecture or luxury platform, the same one that underpins the Lexus LS. You can see you have the company's bold and proud big spindle grille at the front with the kind of intricate L design to the grille design. There was a time where Lexus was putting a blue accented badge on the hybrid model, but you can see they've kind of taken that away because they want to kind of just 
combine the two together and not make the hybrid kind of stand out the way it used to. You can see the headlights. All of them come standard with their premium triple beam, LED low and high beams. You also have LED turn signals, some functional vents down there. No fog lights on the car, and you can see the LED headlight kind of has that typical Nike swoosh uh, that is divorced from the actual headlight uh, assembly. But overall, you can see the engine turned on right there because the car is running, but it will run on the electric power alone when you're at a stop. It turns itself on for the climate control or to recharge the battery. But you can see here, this car still just looks incredible. Uh, I still kind of, it still makes my knees go weak whenever I see one of these vehicles. I don't see them very often, but Lexus did a phenomenal job with the design. I mean, they don't really need to update the exterior because it's so beautiful, but this vehicle competes with cars like a Porsche 911, a BMW 8 Series, a Mercedes AMG SL, of course. Um, so it's got some pretty uh, lofty competition to deal with. Now, in terms of the overall length, you can see it's got a wheelbase of around 113 inches long. Its overall length is around 187 inches long. So this is a kind of mid-sized sized luxury coupe, although this is supposed to be their flagship model, uh, but it's, I believe it's a good size. You can see my tester with the dynamic handling package includes these gorgeous 21 inch wheels with a kind of polished shiny look with black inner spokes. You have these massive brake rotors on six piston calipers in the back. My tester with the dynamic handling package includes upgraded brake pads. You can see there's a 245-40 R 21 inch run flat tire at the front. You have a fatter 275 at the rear to help put that power down. My tester also has the adaptive dampers and you also have dynamic rear wheel steering uh, because it's going to, or that's included with the dynamic handling package. Another thing that's also included with the dynamic handling package is the carbon fiber roof, which again, looks fantastic with this car. You have these black kind of two-tone look to the mirrors. These are power folding and you have integrated turn signals as well. You have some, it looks like functional vents down here that allows for, I believe, cooling over the brakes or something like that. The door handles, they have a pop-out design to them uh, as well, which kind of gives this car, again, a more concept car look. And then looking at the rear of the vehicle, you can see still a beautiful looking car, uh, even in this rather tamer color. Uh, and my tester with the dynamic handling package also includes this just deployable rear spoiler, the active rear spoiler, which you can deploy with the push of a button or above 75 miles an hour. I believe it'll actually uh, pop out to give it better aerodynamics. Now you can see the taillights, full LED design with that kind of three-dimensional look where it looks like it kind of goes inward into the taillight. You have a or integrated turn signal there, which is an LED. And then over here on the rear, you can see the badge here, the Lexus badge used to be blue along with this kind of font behind the LC500H. So this is your only indication that this is the hybrid is it says H right there. And of course the fact that it doesn't have those sweet V8 noises. Now under here, you can see you still have the same dual exhaust system, which is kind of just a trim piece. The actual muffler is behind that. And you can see there's also well-integrated parking sensors, uh, but overall it's still a really nice looking car. Looking at the cargo area, you can see push that button right there. This opens up the trunk. It's not a power opening and closing trunk, which I'm surprised to not see that, but you can see here trunk storage is a little bit small. You have, you have 4.7 cubic feet of total space. It's what's the problem is, is it's, it's a rather shallow trunk. So if you want to, you know, stack up taller items here, I was able to fit my 21 inch roller bag and a backpack in here. Um, so technically, uh, a couple could go on a trip in this vehicle and it should be able to accommodate that. Uh, underneath here, you can see that's where the rear 12 volt battery is. It's mounted at the back here for weight. There's no underfloor storage here. And then the seats, they don't fold down 60, 40 because that's where the battery pack is going to live between the cargo area and the seats. Compared to the gas model, this actually does reduce the cargo space by about 0.5 cubic feet, but at five points or 4.7 cubic feet, it's still already on the small end. So clearly the LC500H is still beautiful on the outside, but let's go ahead and take a look at the interior because that gorgeous circuit red leather is definitely calling my name. Now, before we get inside, I wanna show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the, I wanna say it's the older Lexus fob, um, although I do still see some of their other models still using it. You can see it has the usual lock, unlock, open up the trunk and panic button. Uh, the key fob itself has an interesting design. It feels nice and sturdy. And I also like how this metal material kind of matches the color. It does offer a remote start from the fob in addition to being able to start the car from your app, your phone app. So to do that remote start, you basically want to lock the car and you want to basically hit it three times in sequence. So if you go lock, lock, and then press and hold it on the third time, it'll beep and it'll start to blink the side marker lights and all the lights to let you know that it's actually started up. 
and it'll remote start for about 10 minutes. And it's really nice that Lexus offers you that, offers you that option uh, from the key fob. Although, yes, you can see it didn't actually work this time because you have to do it in the perfect sequence to get it right. So I kind of wish that Lexus would just do a dedicated button to do remote start. But as you can see, as I approach the vehicle, the door handle does not pop out. I have to kind of like push this out on its own and that's when it'll open up. Or you can just hit the unlock button. That'll make the door handle pop out as well. You can see there's a nice little Lexus logo right underneath uh, the door handle and you can see my tester once I open up the door has a stunning interior I mean I love the way this interior looks the design still looks good to me it's really the tech that starts to show this vehicle's age you can see my tester with the performance package or the uh, dynamic handling package includes these upgraded sports seats with the ultra suede Alcantara for the center of the seat I love the circuit red with the two-tone black you have a 10-way power driver seat with a three-person memory these seats are also heated and ventilated sadly Lexus does not offer massaging seats on this car however with the dynamic handling package you can see there's also this carbon fiber area for the side sill which again makes this car have like an exotic car feel. I really love that. You can also see the carbon fiber composite material that they use in the door. So again, they do use some lightweight materials to make this car again stronger in terms of the structure. Uh, on the door panel, you can see you have this beautiful uh, soft touch injection molded plastic here, although I'm surprised this is not stitched. This area here, however, does have a faux stitching area with the ultra suede with these beautiful kind of lines that go along the door panel. You have kind of like a darker red material over here where this is covered in leather and it's nice and padded over here this is a soft padded area for where your arms are going to rest the mirrors are also power folding which is nice and then you also have really high quality window switches which are trimmed in chrome these are one touch automatic up down for both the windows which is nice it's what you expect from a vehicle like this now getting inside you can see the step in is low and you have to kind of duck your head because of the roof line for this car but once you get in Shut the door, it has a very solid sounding funk. Remember, this is built on the same platform as the Lexus LS flagship luxury sedan. And you can see the steering wheel. It's an older Lexus steering wheel, but it does still look pretty nice. It has these metal shift paddle shifters on the wheel itself. Now, starting the vehicle up, you can see the power button is right here. And sadly, unlike the V8, when you start it up, it doesn't make that lovely sound when it starts up. So this is where you might be a little bit disappointed if you guys have driven the V8, uh, but you can see uh, the vehicle kind of comes to life. I have a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel, which is nice. Uh, you have a 10.25 inch center display over here. This is the old Lexus infotainment system, which it looks good over here. It's just when you start to use it when it's, is when it starts to piss you off. The steering wheel itself, you can see it's a heated wheel. It's got really nice leather. It has a good amount of adjustability and range uh, if you guys are trying to get comfortable. The horn also sounds good. It sounds uh, pretty appropriate given the size of this vehicle. And then you can see the gauge display. This is an old gauge display that came, was pulled from the Lexus LFA, but you can see I push this button here and the gauge display actually moves, which is pretty cool. Uh, and you can kind of customize the way how you want this to look and everything like that. If I switch the drive mode over, you can see I can kind of twist that it'll change to be a white color if i switch it over to eco it'll change to be kind of like a blue color so that's something to keep in mind the gauges is slightly customizable but not quite as customizable as some of its competitors now in terms of the materials you can see there's the ultra suede over the instrument panel real leather and stitching along the entire dash there's this really interesting panel here which kind of lights up at night via the ambient lighting there's a plexiglass panel here so it kind of covers up the screen there's not this is not a touch screen and then you have a traditional analog clock over here this is all controlled via the lexus trackpad over here which we don't like again especially when you have it in the carplay function this is a wired connection by the way same thing for android auto it's just annoying to use difficult to use slightly and then when you go back to the lexus system here you can see there's the old gps which isn't great uh, push the menu button here. Those where it gives you all your usual so sources and whatnot. So again, this isn't wonderful. You can also see this car is old via the CD player here. Most new cars are getting rid of that. You have dual zone automatic climate control. Uh, everything in here, however, feels high quality. You can see it all just feels really well made, very uh, snugly put together. The build quality here really shows you that, that Lexus is, you know, pursuing that kind of perfection when it comes to interior build quality. The shifter here, uh, you can see is electronic. You push it over to the left and up to go into reverse. There's your backup camera with parking sensors and rear cross traffic alert, but no 360 camera. I don't believe that's available on this car. And then kick it down to go to drive. And there's also a manual mode when you just kind of kick that back in addition to using the paddles. You can see the engine came on when I put it in manual mode. Uh, the track pad you can see here looks nice, but again, it's just kind of annoying to use. It also has haptic feedback. I do love the large volume knob here with the actual scrolly wheel for the tune. So that's really great along with the seek track, some shortcut buttons 
and whatnot. Padded area over here, if you open this up, you can see that's where one cup holder is and that's where another cup holder is. So in terms of storage, this car is definitely lacking in terms of storage. If I open this up, you can see your two USB-A charging ports are in there. That's the main one to connect it to the Apple CarPlay. Uh, so again, not very much storage here. There is a little bit more storage down here and a little cubby there where you could put your phone, which is a good spot for it. Uh, the seats, like I said earlier, are very comfortable and supportive. These are the upgraded sports seats, which really hold you in place nicely. Above me, there is no sunroof available on this car at all, but you can see the dynamic handling package includes the Alcantara headliner and the Alcantara on the uh, A-pillar. And on the sun visors, you can see, push that button, that opens up the glove box, although mine keeps getting stuck for some reason. There's just not very much space in here. It's basically taken up by this gigantic uh, owner's manual portfolio book in there, which takes up, like I said earlier, basically all the space. And then if you want to get into the back seat, I guess I'll go ahead and amuse you guys by getting back there and showing you what it's like. Now, to get back here, it's a power seat, but you basically just pull this and you manually push it forward. Now, when you do that, the seat power folds itself out of the way. Now, in terms of legroom, Lexus claims there's like 32 inches of space back here. Now, I'm five foot seven, so I will suck it up and sit back here to show you guys what the space is like. Now, first of all, the headroom space is not great. Even somebody my height, I have to literally cock my head over to the right because if I don't, my head is literally on the glass. And if I kind of go like this, then I'm okay. But then I have to also slouch. And then my knees, as you can see, are literally here. Now, if I pull this seat back, which you pull it back, this will start to come back. Hopefully it doesn't crush my legs. Ooh, okay. It moved up a little bit because it sensed that my feet were there. There is a decent amount of foot space underneath here and my knees surprisingly aren't touching, which is nice. But again, I have to continue to cock my head over. If I go like this, I guess I can, I'm okay now. But again, now my knees are up against the seat itself. Thankfully, this is a soft area, which is nice. But again, you're gonna wanna put short people back here because even an average size adult like me uh, has a tough time sitting back here. I mean, I could do this on a really short trip, but it would be really uncomfortable. Thankfully, materials back here is nice. You can see leather and al suede Alcantara down here. No actual armrest pad though. So I don't really have anything to kind of like nestle myself in with these seats. You can only seat two back here, but overall you could probably are gonna reserve this for stuff or people you don't like or very small children, but at least the LC does come with back seats. So it has been probably, I'd say, about four or five years since I've driven the Lexus LC500H, the hybrid model. I just spent a week about six months ago with the convertible with the V8, which I still love this car, despite the fact that Lexus refuses to give the LC the proper major refresh that it probably needs, which is primarily due for an infotainment system upgrade. But the hybrid model, I wasn't the biggest fan of the car back in the day because the V8 just has to has such a wonderful exhaust note. And plus, this car is more expensive, but it has a lot less horsepower, like 120 almost less horsepower. But despite that, Lexus actually says the zero to 60 times should be similar. So now that I finally have my testing equipment, I've never been able to test this car out. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. I have the car in its Sport Plus setting. Remember, this is only rear wheel drive. It's got 354 horsepower. We'll brake torque it. Which it didn't like me brake torquing it, but 5.64 seconds there. And again, it didn't like me brake torquing it, so I'll try it again later, or I don't brake torque it. And in that, on that same stretch, we got around 4.8 seconds in the LC500 convertible, uh, which was a couple, which was about six months ago when I first drove that, which I found the performance to be acceptable, although it's amazing how we live in a world where 4.8 seconds isn't fast. 5.6 certainly doesn't feel fast, but I learned basically don't brake torque the LC500 convertible. This multi-stage hybrid is still a very, very interesting transmission to drive because it still gives you those gear shifts. They're simulated gear shifts from gear one through five and then a four-speed auto takes over later on to give you a different feel, an actual shift because it's actually got gears. But let's try it again here. This thing does feel quick. All right, I got 5.07 seconds there, and that's with it going slightly more uphill. That time is actually pretty impressive. We're gonna try it again later down the road where it's a more flat surface and see what we can get. Uh, the engine itself, it's a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6. Remember, Toyota and Lexus is going away from a V6. They're replacing it with turbo four cylinders. In fact, 
I believe this car and the LS and the L and the LX are the last ones that have a V6. The GX still has a V8 for now, but it's probably gonna go uh, away soon. Same thing with the IS500. Uh, but honestly, this powertrain is certainly very unique in this segment. Everybody doesn't really care about hybrids when you're talking about a luxury GT Coupe. Uh, and everyone pretty much has a V8 or some even still offer a V12. Uh, what I like about this hybrid powertrain is with the twin electric motors and that naturally aspirated V6, the transmission, the way it's tuned, it is actually, very responsive. When I put my foot down, it quickly will shuffle through the ratios. The CVT will also adjust everything to put the engine right in the meat of its power band. And the sound, it's a typical V6 noise. It doesn't sound obviously as good as the V8. Do I wish that I had the V8 sound? Sure, I do. I love that V8 sound. However, what this car does give you is it gives you more of a sensation of low end torque. So even though the V8 is quicker on the higher revs and it sounds better, this hybrid system actually feels quicker in day-to-day -day driving because of the electric motor torque that just kind of gives you all of that grunt uh, instantly, uh, basically. And it just makes this car feel a lot quicker than the numbers would suggest. And plus when you're driving it normally, it actually will do gear shifts. It actually feels pretty responsive and quick. And it's a nice sound. I like the way this car feels. It makes it, makes it feel a lot faster than the numbers would suggest. And I think that's important uh, when you're talking about a vehicle like this, you want it to feel effortless. You want it to feel quick. That's what people technically are looking for when they drive something like this. Let's go ahead and try again. Zero to 60 right here. Oof. Definitely feels fast and <laughs> wow. 4.85 seconds there. All right. That is a level surface and that practically matches the time that I got with the LC500 convertible with the V8. Now keep in mind the V8 is the slightly heavier option, but if you look at the numbers, they actually weigh about the same because the hybrid system adds about an extra 100 pounds. The convertible also adds an extra 100 pounds, but my tester has the performance package, so it's got the adaptive dampers, it's got the rear wheel steering, it's got the <laughs> limited slip diff, and this thing still handles really well. It's a luxury GT car, but hides its weight very well. That's the thing about the LC is if you wanna have some fun on a curvy road, the steering is very communicative and it feels good. I don't always know what the front tires are doing, but the suspension feels nicely tuned for it. Uh, really, it's only when you start pushing the car hard that you're gonna remember this car is supposed to be more of like a luxury GT car. But it will hold its own on a back road and that's kind of what's very surprising about this vehicle is it it gives you the sense that you're driving something special. It still feels special after all these years. It still feels quick. In fact, back in the day, I would have preferred the V8. Still like the V8 noise, but you know what? If you go for this hybrid model, it is not bad. Could Toy or could Lexus make the hybrid even quicker? Absolutely. They could make this a plug-in hybrid. They can give it a separate E-axle at the front end and give this thing all-wheel drive. I mean, they have the technology to do it now. It would be interesting to see all-wheel drive in this car because most vehicles in this segment do offer all-wheel drive for people who want that extra grip. This car only offers rear-wheel drive. Uh, in terms of visibility, you can see out of the car pretty well. The view out of the back actually isn't too obscure. The back window is surprisingly large, but Lexus doesn't offer that digital camera review mirror like they offer in some other models. The driver assistance tech in this car is starting to feel a little bit dated but it works fine. Really, where the hybrid truly shines is in the fuel efficiency. Uh, in my week's worth of testing with this model, I've been averaging around 27, 28 miles to the gallon. Uh, that is mostly highway driving. This car is rated at 26, 33. Uh, you can, I wasn't able to break 30 MPG on the highway, but I suspect for those of you who are a little more conservative, you can if you drive like probably under 70 miles an hour. I was going around 75 uh, and it was doing around 28 MPG, 29 at best. Uh, this thing was showing around 500 miles of range on a full tank, which is amazing. It does require premium, but it has a big 22 gallon gas tank, of course. But uh, compared to the V8, the V8 got around 18 miles to the gallon. So I got literally almost 10 MPG better with this hybrid system versus the V8. So that reason alone, if you guys are looking to, you know, not pay so much money for fuel at the pump, you're gonna wanna go with this one because 28 MPG in something that weighs 4,500 pounds that it can accelerate to 60 in under five seconds is pretty decent even though this car's been on the market for a few years. The seats are also pretty comfortable. I love the ultra suede that you get with this circuit red leather with the atomic silver looks good. This vehicle still is very quiet on the inside. When you don't, when you don't push the engine, it will drive around in electric only at low speeds, which 
again, it makes you feel like you're driving an electric car, although it doesn't have any electric only range. The ride quality is also agreeable, even in Sport Plus, the dampers, the adaptive dampers gives this a very nice ride quality. So I'll take that. It's funny because as I've gotten older, I, I really appreciate comfortable riding vehicles. And I like how Lexus is able to balance decent handling with a good ride quality, a comfortable and quiet interior. This car, you could easily daily drive it every day. What keeps you from daily driving it every day if you live in areas like where I live where it snows is the fact that it's rear wheel drive only. But again, if Lexus wants to keep their flagship luxury coupe fresh, they need to add all wheel drive to it. They need to beef up the electric motors. They need to add a new infotainment system. The styling of the car is fantastic. I still notice that people stare at this car all day long when I'm driving it. It still turns heads everywhere. It still looks great on the outside. I would like to see Lexus offer like a different style wheel, these chrome wheels with the black finish. It's been on the car since the car first came out back in 2017, so it's, I think it's time for a slight update there. But overall, with the efficiency, the power, the looks, the way this car feels, it just still feels special. Uh, there's still very much a lot to like about the LC. And between the V8 and the hybrid, it's really gonna come down to your preference. I personally like both, but I think if I was actually gonna daily drive this car more and I was stuck in traffic a lot, I would go with the hybrid because the efficiency that it gives you is far improve a big improvement over the v8 and it might actually be enough considering the speed is the same to give up that lovely exhaust noise so it's crazy to me that this car has been on the market for six years but i have to say even though it is starting to get a little bit old in terms of the design the exterior styling has aged very well this car still looks timeless to me it still turns heads it's still beautiful it makes your knees go weak Really, it's only the interiors where you start to notice this car is getting old because the infotainment system in this car is the older Lexus trackpad system, which is just terrible. It does at least have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto via a wired connection. But again, Lexus has their all new uh, interface, uh, Lexus interface that they've just introduced in so many models. And I would love to see the company add that to this vehicle. So I'm hoping that Lexus will eventually do a heavy mid-cycle refresh and update the technology in this car. In terms of the exterior styling, I would like to see some new finishes on the wheels, but overall the styling of this car still looks good. I don't really think Lexus needs to do much if they did a heavy refresh on the exterior styling. In terms of the handling of the car, the LC still does a really great job of hiding its weight. You forget all the time that this car weighs around 4,500 pounds because it handles well. In terms of acceleration, zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds is plenty fast and it matches the speed for the most part of the V8 convertible. Now I suspect the V8 coupe will probably be a little bit faster, maybe 4.5 seconds, but again, how much quicker do you actually need to go? Because where this car really excels is in the fuel efficiency. I got almost 10 MPG better versus the V8 and you can go over 500 miles of range. There's nothing else in the segment that has that much range. So really what Lexus needs to do is they, sh they should offer this vehicle with all wheel drive. Put the E-axle in the front of this vehicle to give it even more power and give it all wheel drive and that'll keep the LC fresh and also attract newer buyers or younger buyers to this uh, particular vehicle because of the additional technology. Now, of course, being that this is the company's flagship luxury coupe, this car is not cheap. Now, the V8 model starts at $95,600. There's actually a $6,000 premium if you guys want to go for the V6 hybrid. Is it worth that premium? That's really going to depend on your driving style and your preference. Personally, I like the V8 sound a lot, but if I constantly drove in rush hour traffic and I needed to get something with better fuel efficiency and I plan to use this as a daily driver more often and I didn't really care about the V8 noise that much because the V6 doesn't sound horrible, it's just not as good as the V8. Personally, I think that the $6,000 charge, you'll probably make that up in fuel cost over the next five years, depending on how much you drive. But my tester, of course, with the $7,000 dynamic handling package, the Mark Levinson stereo, the uh, heads-up display and destination comes in at $110,570. I know it's a six-figure price tag, but this car definitely has six-figure looks on the outside and on the inside. It just feels very special aside from the technology. And keep in mind, it does significantly undercut a lot of rivals by as much as fifty dollars to $100,000 because Lexus, again, likes to compare this car to Aston Martins and Bentleys at times, although in reality, I'd say most people are going to probably end up cross shopping it with a BMW 8 Series or a Mercedes Benz SL. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 Lexus LC500H. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.